this goes back to the whole uh, philosophical thing that Joe Rogan always talks about with tribes, people and tribes. Yeah. And it, you can go to the macrocosm and you can bring it down to the microcosm. But like you're saying, it can be between a wrestler and a judo guy or a judo guy and a jiu-jitsu guy. But then you get into jiu-jitsu itself and we have our own infighting. It can be between no gi and gi. You see that constantly. It can be within the gi itself. It can be guard pullers and takedown guys. And it can be, you know modern uh jiu-jitsu versus old school jiu-jitsu you know close guard versus worm guard yeah. everybody has their thing and the problem is that nobody's wrong and nobody's right and it's i think like we need to start calling it grappling period yeah whether you're sambo judo lucha libre bjj collegiate wrestling it's all grappling we're all using the same meat suit that we're given you know with the same anatomical uh, abilities and resistances and who cares how you welcome 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 friends family uh people i don't know enemies whoever else is listening welcome to the show you are listening to the matrix bjj podcast I'm your host, Paul Tokizolu, and it's great to have you listening today. My guest today is Drew Weatherhead. Drew is the creator of Because Jitsu. Because Jitsu is a meme site for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mixed martial arts, life in general, and all things pertaining to our sport. In my opinion, Drew creates some of the best comedy that I have seen related to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And that's saying a lot because we have some seriously talented comedians in the Jiu Jitsu industry. I was really excited to have Drew on the show because as uh, people who listen to this podcast regularly know I'm really interested in finding out more from people who are like doing things in jiu-jitsu that are not necessarily owning an academy or being an athlete. Drew is someone who is an athlete uh, tournament promoter but he's also creating comedy on the side. I talked about this a little bit in the interview but I think that memes are people take them too lightly you know they're really it's really hard to put together a really funny meme if you've ever tried to make one before or maybe I just suck at it who knows but I've always been really impressed by Drew's work I found it hilarious but also like really artistically impressive I was excited to have him on the show make sure you go to his page on Facebook or Instagram because Jitsu give him a like a follow a tweet a gram a regram and uh, support his work please give it up for Drew Weatherhead show man thanks a lot for doing this podcast yeah my pleasure paul how's it going good man so your memes are the best i've seen in the jiu-jitsu community no offense to all the other meme jiu-jitsu <laughs> creators <laughs> out there no they can take offense screw them <laughs> but um how did you get started doing because jitsu well um honestly it came out of a place of frustration to begin with and um i think it was i want to say late 2015 that i started i think it was september and there was just some stuff going on in uh, my own personal jujitsu verse that was uh, tied up in a lot of politics and um, i wanted to do something that could circumvent that I didn't have to watch what I said about who and um, I could just like get irreverent about BJJ instead of us everything and you know respect the system and blah 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 there's a lot of bullshit that goes on with BJJ that I thought needed to be poked fun at and so when I started it it was literally on a whim in the middle of a shift at work and I just picked up my phone and I downloaded a meme app started like just screwing around putting a bunch of stuff together started a uh, instagram account in like 10 minutes and like put even less thought into the name people are always asking me so what's the big meaning behind the name like literally there was like no meaning it was like if anybody ever asked why i made the because jitsu it's just because jitsu it's (laughs) self-explanatory And then uh, I, I've been friends with Rafa Sparza for about a year before that, who uh, runs Verbal Tap. He does his own podcast and memes as well. I met him down in California. And so I kind of got his advice on a few things, um, 
he's a he's a good comedian too so i don't know i never uh i never tried any comedic ventures before that i everybody seems to think that they're funny so i was like oh right, we'll see if the world thinks i'm funny and what do you know it actually stuck <laughs> i think it's i think it's sticking uh quite well like congrats on getting shared by joe rogan the other day that's pretty cool yeah, how that's, wild is that dude, that's not that's so crazy that's not it's like I listen to that guy constantly, but at the same time, as personal as like listening to him, like stream either the same time or a few hours later in real life, it still feels like he's in a different world, right? So to yeah. have him interact is something bizarre. It's like, oh, right, you're a person. <laughs> That's weird. Person who has a Twitter and likes uh, memes. Yeah, yeah. How about that? I remember. Um, I actually, uh, I didn't notice the post because I went to bed like 10 minutes before he posted it, literally like 10 minutes. And I woke up in the morning for my shift, like way too early in the morning. I wake up at like 4 a.m. to get to my shift by six. And uh, I had like a couple messages from other meme makers congratulating me. I'm like, what, what, huh? What are you congratulating me on? And sure enough, I follow the little bread trail back to Joe Rogan's account. I'm like, holy cool, man. shit, this actually happened. That's I've been cool. like, angling at that that repost for like a year a year and a half i made like my own little um hit list of reposts that i wanted and just decided to shoot for the stars i wanted uh i basically just did the whole uh jre regular crew i wanted brendan shaw brian callen eddie bravo and joe rogan so that was my like uh my my goal upon goals so i managed to get uh fighter and the kid a little while ago so knock those two off the list two birds one stone uh then i got um eddie he reposted me like two or three times i was like man that's pretty cool i gotta be getting pretty close to joe rogan like eight months of nothing and i tried and i tried and i'm tagging him and everything and there's people tagging him in these joe rogan specific memes it just was never gonna happen and it's just everything sort of came together when i wasn't expecting it and now I'm a pretty big deal right now. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> I bet you went out the next day and bought a limo. <laughs> no, he sent me one. I, I'm angling at a helicopter next. <laughs> I got, um, like, the day that he, uh, everything hit the fan, that 4 a.m. day. Uh, later that night, I was at class teaching jiu-jitsu. And, because uh, I actually do it from time to time. And I, uh... Uh, like halfway through I was looking at my notes on my phone for my techniques and I got a DM from him too and like there must have been like one of my students must have seen my face change or something and he's like what uh, like <laughs> Joe Rogan just DM'd me they're like whoa, whoa. the whole class just sort of stops for a second <laughs> they're like wait a sec say that again that's <laughs> no cool, for man. serious it happened that's so I put cool. my hands up like I just won the championship I'm like yay I just made a world famous comedian laugh for um for people listening and they're like man this is this is silly it's it's actually a pretty big deal to get re like shared or reposted or reblogged or whatever you want to, whatever the name is for that specific social media platform but it is a really big deal um worthy of yeah, congratulations it's kind of a tip of the hat right yeah it's um you know it's people running this podcast and I'm sure you've had the same type of experience but I didn't realize how much goes into social media and how much goes into marketing things online. But you learn very quickly that these things are very important because you see the you see the results. You see what happens next when someone yeah. really popular shares your stuff. Yeah, literally within 24 hours, I had a thousand different new followers on Instagram. Yeah, it's awesome. It was pretty cool. I mean, uh, like I don't do this for money. I don't make a cent off it. Um, honestly, I've lost money on it putting it into a couple t-shirt projects and stuff it's it's all for fun so to get like props is mostly what i get out of it you know i do it for the fun yeah if people think it's silly it's supposed to be silly as the whole platform i think that um memes are like a new form of art or a new form of comedy for sure that we are just now seeing like earlier i was looking at um far side did you ever read the far side like yeah, back in the 90s. Those, yeah. those are like the beginning of memes you know like one picture comedy i don't know that's if... a really good point yeah because usually it was panel art when you see like newspaper comics yeah 
Yeah. Interesting. And I don't think people like understand what's going on, but memes are like it's like far side, but everyone can do it. You know, everyone can That's make a far thing, side. Right? It's universal. Like absolutely anybody can put text over a photo right now. And um, I got people that will ask me sometimes, like, how do you come up with your ideas? What's your process? I'm like, dude, it's so simple. Like literally you find a picture or a picture finds you, it just shows up on your feed and it's all it is is like a caption list project. Like you just try to think up something witty to either poke fun at or, you know, add a quote to something. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It just takes a bit of a uh, bit of time and a quick wit. That's all. But I think that a lot of thought, a lot of talent goes into it. So props, props to you because memes are hard. Like it's hard to be funny in one photo or one frame rather you know, and then you just have like a sentence to make someone laugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, the punchline is is what everybody sees, um, and it it definitely it takes some effort. Um, I try to specifically with mine when I see something that I'm like, okay, that'll make a good picture, whether I know what I'm going to do with it or not. I try to find an angle that wouldn't be the first apparent thing to make a joke about, right? Yeah. Because then I'm I'm pretty secure in knowing that I'm not going to be like call for plagiarism if somebody else had already thought of it before that for the same picture you know that happens from time to time you get these uh, linear angles that other people have hit um, but on top of that it's like other things that people don't recognize is is I try to maybe it's just me I've got a bit of an OCD ADD streak going but I try to make the actual typesetting of the font as symmetrical as possible and it's difficult because you've got to choose your words not only for the most comedic effect but also to fit well within the picture so if you notice like i try to to keep things yeah. in the borderlines of the picture noticed. and <laughs> and like i will literally change the wording of a sentence if it makes it look more pleasing to my eye yeah i um i've noticed for sure like whenever i see one of your memes pop up on my facebook feed or something i can tell that it's you just before i see even who posted it you know right right there's yeah, like a uniform reason i try to brand with the same fonts and uh, a similar uh similar kind of format so that it, it can't have sort of a signature to it what's the what's your favorite one that you've that you've made Ooh, ooh. okay this is the problem with my own personal sense of humor is that my favorite types of memes are wordplay and they get the fewest likes by far. But I will sit, like literally be giggling like a schoolgirl reading it over and over and over. So if my favorite ones probably wouldn't even register on most people's top 100. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to remember, there was one I did like over a year ago that had to do with Keenan Cornelius. And I used his name in wordplay like four or five times within the same sentence. And it just, I, I just crap in my pants laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I I like the word play so keep them, yeah. keep them coming yeah sure. right on there's some, literally I've lost followers over word play like sometimes I'll get on a series of memes that have the similar either the same picture or the similar type of punchline and I'll put like I don't know between three to ten of them together in one day and uh, just be dropping them one hour at a time one hour at a time drop another one drop another one and if people didn't like the first one and really didn't like the second one I lose them by the third one <laughs> I've literally had people posted unfollow like, oh wow Jeez. whoa man it's dark <laughs> yeah yeah just like, a bunch wow, of memes that, that really doesn't matter but good for you <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> but that's that's honestly part of the fun of the irreverence of it like there was a, a series I did a while ago that made I, not really made fun of, but word played with the either first or last name of famous jujitsu athletes. So, like, one would have um, Robert Drysdale, and another one would be Robert Wetsdale, and like, you know, it's just silly things like that. I'd play with their names, like uh, Eddie Cummings, Eddie Goings, and I'd have pictures that would go along with them. And people got mad about that. Like, how dare you make that? Meanwhile, the <laughs> actual submission artists are like laughing and, and commenting on their picture, right? But these other so like white knights are getting, uh, I guess, they're getting pissed off for them. That's so funny, man. People are crazy. The internet's a crazy place. The Wild West, man. It's it's a gong show out there, and it's what makes it fun. <laughs> was there ever? I'm sure this is the case, but how? I shouldn't say was there ever. How often do you make a meme and think like, oh, this is shit. This will never 
get popular and then it like takes off it's funny you should say that because it happens more often than not and it pisses me off because i'll like there's been ones where i will be hovering over the post button with my finger and be thinking this is garbage should i even put this out and i'll be like ah oh, there's got to be somebody i'll like it i'll post it and it like does triple what the regular ones do i'm like what is wrong with you people that was garbage like is this what you want should I, should I stop trying? <laughs> I know that feeling. Like when you make a post and you're like, sometimes you'll make a really good post and it'll be like full of wisdom and knowledge or <laughs> lots of thought put into it. And then no one will, or maybe we'll get like 10 likes or something. I don't know. Yeah. Zero likes. But then you do one where you're like, ah, oh, whatever. I just, I need to get a post out today. I'll do this one, whatever. And yeah. You put hashtag jujitsu is life and you get 10,000 reposts. Yeah. <laughs> Like, come on. <laughs> Are there any um, corny things that you do that you, like, you, like, have to do because it's the, if you want to get follows or you want to get likes, you know you have to do this one thing, but you hate doing it? Is there anything like yes. that? Yes. And that would be hashtag, hashtag. I hate hashtagging things. There's, uh, like, three specific hashtags that I throw up. They're just again kind of like a branding thing i've done it since the beginning and just do it out of habit my phone just auto populates that area when i put hashtag so i throw up i think bjj hashtag because jitsu and hashtag jujitsu problems and so if you were to search any probably i mean bjj will blow up the world for tags but like bjj problems or because jitsu it'll just pull up every one that i've ever done but i don't like go into I see people that will do like the 20 hashtags per posts and they're all original and they're putting thought into them. But I'm like, that's just too much effort. Most of the people aren't going to read it. And honestly, it just muddies up the comment that you're or like yeah. the, the header that you're going to put underneath. And who's trying to like, no one's, if you come up with super creative hashtags for every single photo, no one's like randomly searching no, that. No, like, they don't get the use out of it. It's supposed to be irony, right? Yeah, you're putting yeah. it up, almost making fun of the hashtag format which i get but it gets really annoying yeah and um it's not original anymore no no it was funny when hashtags first came out i remember when facebook brought them out after instagram and everybody's like oh hashtags on facebook hashtag facebook hashtag hashtag you know hashtag too many hashtags and like okay it was funny like a little bit the first time now literally everybody's doing that yeah give it up have you have you le what have you learned about the jujitsu community from from this project mm. I think I've learned that um, you can really filter out the people who have a sense of humor and the people who don't in a hurry. And it's not that hard. Like you have to, you barely have to put any spice into a meme and there'll be people that are angry about it. There'll be people that uh, drop nasty comments and there'll be people that are laughing their asses off at the very same thing. And um, I don't want to generalize because, you know, everybody's unique or whatever, but I'm going to generalize and I find that the 10th planet and submission only type people have a way better sense of humor. Like they don't seem to be so tied to tradition. They don't seem to be like, Oh, you have to wear a white clean gi and you have to tie your belt in this specific way. And the bar goes on this side, you know, all that, that like religious part of BJJ that really makes people pious. They don't have that to begin with. And I think that um, just their culture is a little more silly and, and fun loving. So, uh, shout out to hashtag 10 P for life. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean, man. So many people, <laughs> people get so indoctrinated by jujitsu. And it's true. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that was kind of like the, uh, the cauldron that made me begin this whole meme thing to begin with. Cause I was kind of stuck in that myself at that point, we were in a, a bad situation with an affiliation we were at at the time. And I promote tournaments and there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes on that you know interpolitic bullshit between other promoters and other schools and different affiliations and you know some coaches are assholes and whatnot yeah. but it's just it's so much fun to just try to either circumvent that or just shoot it right in the face mm -hmm. so what, what about you you came from uh what what background as far as affiliation because I, I was listening to a couple of, of your podcasts and it, it sounded like it was maybe um helson Gracie, is that right? Yeah, I started at a Helsin Gracie school. Well, backtracking, I first started at a Hanato Tavreya school back in the day, but I wasn't very committed. 
and um, I was doing a lot of judo at the same school, and I was doing some ninjutsu, which is why I am. Damn. That's why, yeah, I know. That's why, like, you can you can probably hardly see me right now because I'm invoking some of my invisibility powers. That's important. I hear. Yeah, man, it's it's helpful, but um. Yeah, so I wasn't like jujitsu was kind of. I was like, okay, I got a bunch of other martial arts. Jujitsu is like just one of them. But then I found this mm-hmm. really great school, Gracie Maryland in Maryland, and they're a Helsin, <laughs> Helsin, Helsin, Gracie Maryland there in Kentucky. People as much thought into their name as I did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're in uh, they're a Helsin Gracie school. So that's when I kind of like really got into jujitsu specifically. And um, okay, so riddle me this. Helson to me seems like is about as traditional as you can possibly get. Like he may have been yeah. more traditional than Helio. Yeah, man, he is very traditional. Um, I remember seeing a video with him talking about how you can only wear white geese. Yeah, only white geese. Like, like not just in his affiliation. Like the world should only wear white geese because it's disrespectful. Otherwise, you look like a clown, and you have to wear a, not just a blue belt, but a certain type of blue belt. It can't be sky blue. It can't be worn. It's got to be. You know, and he talks about the exact like one centimeter stripe for every stripe that goes on the bar. I'm like, holy shit! Does this stuff matter to anybody? So let me get this straight. So you you don't follow those rules. No, I'm the guy with like the purple unicorn gi that will like tie my belt three different ways well, during class. I'll have to like, end this. I'll like have a... to end this call right here. I, it's not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I um, I don't know. That stuff is okay. That stuff's cool. I I mean, when I was there, yeah, I, I wore a white gi, but it, well, you have to, right? Yeah, but um, I mean, they weren't they weren't super strict about it they like if you showed up wearing not a white gi they didn't tell you to like leave they didn't mm. they were just like they would like you to wear a white gi and oh, okay. on, honestly um at first i thought it was a little weird but it does look cool it does look mm-hmm. cool when the whole class is wearing a white gi i will sure. i'll mean i'll give it to you there helson like it does like aesthetically look really cool you know. But is that really what he was thinking about in the 1930s? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But, uh, <laughs> it's all black and white anyways. Yeah. So I don't buy any of that at all, for sure. In fact, the only gi I wear these days is black, because the life black. But, uh, Damn. You know, um, that's the ninjutsu no. coming out. Right yeah, there. that's what I mean, the ninjutsu. It helps your stealthiness. Stealthiness yes. plus 10. Yes, of course. So, um, yeah, so I don't buy any of that stuff really at all. Yeah, I'm. I would say I'm about as non-traditional as a jujitsu jujitsu person can get. Sometimes I'll bow ironically. It's about it. Uh, <laughs> bow to the spirits in the room. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, speaking of non-traditional, you you're probably big into the uh, the dark side. Hey, I I hear you had Oliver Taza and Dean Lister and other dark Sith lords out there recently. Yeah, we um. <laughs> Dude, that's so much fun. All, we had um, Oliver Taza and Dean Lister in the same weekend at, at the same seminar. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. Did you ever, ever have your leg reaped at any point during those seminars? I, I mean, they um, they tried to, but I just disqualified them during the role. I was going to say, like, how can you still be walking? It's yeah. a good thing you're sitting down for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just getting through... Um, the surgery from that knee reap, but also the uh, counseling, the emotional uh, healing. Uh, well, I'll pray for you. Thank you. <laughs> send, send good vibes. Appreciate that. Been pr- I've been pr- Set up a GoFundMe <laughs> account for the guy who was reaped by Dean Lister. I um, I've been praying to Alio Gracie's uh, that he'll heal, <laughs> that he will heal me. Um, and well, just, you better get rid of that black gee then. I know you're, you're right. I'll, I'll right now. I'll burn it at the altar tonight. <laughs> <laughs> as a side of my sacrifice um yeah. you know i gotta prepare for my next uh, ibjjf tournament so i want to be <laughs> um but do you actually do you, do you roll ibjjf no um no. i'd probably get disqualified in about 30 seconds at, at this oh, point yeah. at this point i should i should i hear there i mean i, I did one and um 
I went to one IBJJF tournament last year in Poland, and I made the mistake of not reading the uniform rules. I read the oh, yeah. I read the rule book for the 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 rules, you know, the for the grappling part, uh, mm. very carefully. <laughs> for the jiu-jitsu part, <laughs> yeah, for the jiu-jitsu part, I read that, you know, cover to cover, and of course, I read the. I read the gi regulations because I was like, yeah, they probably have regulations on your gi and, you know, the length. And I understand, I understand length rules, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, you don't want to have someone show up in a super tiny gi. I understand. Hashtag meow brothers. Hey, you know, don't want to, don't want to point any fingers, but we'll point, we'll I don't point know a how few. those guys get past gi check. They must know the guy every time. <laughs> Maybe they just like beat <laughs> up the guy. Slip him a couple real and they slip past. <laughs> So I read the gi rules, and I thought to myself, surely, surely there's no, there could not be any rules for no gi. Surely. Like, what type of rules could you possibly have? And lo, last words. lo and behold, I, I quickly learned the rules for no gi. And I had to run around and try to find, I found some very nice people there who loaned me some, some gear, so I was able to fight. But yeah. I was going to say, that's usually why they have vendors there. Like, 50% of their sales are to people who aren't wearing the right thing. I know, man. Um, I They did not at this one. They did not. Oddly enough, I only had one fight that tournament. And the other guy who I was supposed to fight, um, <laughs> he was the only other guy in my division. And... He um, he also didn't know the rules about about, <laughs> and we we figured out because I I literally went around and asked every single person at the tournament and it was not that large for for an IBJJF tournament so I asked mm-hmm. almost everyone and I found the guy who I was going to compete against like you know just by asking around and he was yeah. like wait what what weight category are you in and we we found out we were going to fight each other and he didn't know the rules either. And we both went to the organizers and we were like, listen, we're the only we're the only two people in this division in this weight class. Well, we just want to fight each other. Can we please do that? And they were like, no, you can't. You have to. <laughs> they were like, neither of us have the right uniform. they put you on the mat, disqualify both of you, and give yeah. the ref the gold medal? <laughs> like, somebody has to win. A hundred percent of the people in this division don't know what they're doing. But I, I was able, we were both able to find some gear, and then he choked me out. So it was good time. Oh, I was going to say, maybe he found a patch of grass and catch me outside after. That's what I told him. I told him, like, if if there's no... Because they had, like, a warm-up area. And I told him, like, hey, if we can't fight, let's just go roll. And he was like, yeah, that sounds good, but I really want to fight. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, me too. <laughs> so everyone knows you from... Because Jitsu, obviously. But who is the man behind the memes? Like, what do you do outside of that? Well, unfortunately, I don't make money off of jiu-jitsu yet, uh, not in any meaningful fashion. Like I said, I do run tournaments, which uh, make me some money that mostly just perpetuates being able to run the next tournament. What tournaments do you run? What uh, which, uh, which There's, there's sub-only events. I, they're called the Submission Ace Championship. And um, I started doing that for a somewhat of a similar reason to why I started doing memes, is just because there was a vacuum. In in our particular area, I live in a city that is like dead center in between the two major city centers in Alberta, Canada, where I live. Uh, So there's this big, there's this medium sized city in between two big cities, but all the tournaments were at the two big cities and there was never anything where I was at in the middle. And it only made sense to me to do tournaments there and draw in people halfway, right, from each city. Instead of having them travel three hours to one and three hours back, they could travel an hour and a half and meet in the middle. So that's why I started doing that. And um, I just like, I was a competitor for a long time. I I started competing three weeks into training. And so I kind of just wanted to put something together that I would want to do. So I guess that actually plays pretty well to other grapplers. They were getting the big bang for their buck. It was round robin, so you got lots of matches, uh, sub only. So it's like, you're not getting screwed on advantages. Uh, There was started using uh, belts for absolute divisions, um, had super fights, big medals, you know, I tried to put everything I can into this. It's, it's half awesome. the reason I don't make a lot of money off it because it takes a lot of money to put this yeah, thing out. That's but, awesome. Yeah, so so that's kind of my, I do that a couple times a year. As far as vocationally, I'm a journeyman welder. So I uh, am one of those evil people the Californians hate who's perpetuating the oil field. 
we're up here in Alberta, that's kind of like half of the profit of Alberta is the oil field. Yeah. So if you aren't like working in it, you're usually working for something that helps it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I do. I, I work at a place that welds on um, big machinery for, for oil field mines. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, it makes decent money, but How... I hate it. So uh, I do it for a living. You know, I don't do it for fun. Yeah. How long have you it's... been um, training jujitsu? Uh, it will be 10 years on June the 21st. Oh, cool, man. That's so awesome. Coming up on a big one. That's awesome. Yeah. I, that's, that's cool that you know the date. I. Couldn't, yeah. I couldn't tell you the date. No way. You know what? Uh, there was I, I remembered for the first couple of years, and then I lost it by like year three, like what the exact date was. And thank God for Facebook. I actually went back and found the post of the first day that I went to jujitsu. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I had to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll years back, but I found it, so it's it's locked in my brain now because I don't want to cool. scroll anymore. Yeah, <laughs> make a note of that one for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I um. I couldn't tell you. I know like around about the age when I started. So I could think okay. like, oh, well, yeah. Wait. I, I've been gleaning information from your previous podcast and you said you're six years in, right? Yes. This is going on year seven. Okay. And you're 25? Yes. So screw you. You started when you were 18 or 19? Uh, I think I was, I was like either eight, I was either like about to turn 19 or had just turned no screw you one of the two screw you i didn't start till i was 24 i wish i started when i was 18 dude i I I wish that so i started judo when i was 15 but i quit after about uh a year maybe and i and i always think like if i had stuck with that if i had Mm. stuck when i for like an extra three or four years then i would be world champion but yeah of course that's how of it course works. that's how it works <laughs> guaranteed result but yeah. but did um, your um jujitsu or sorry did your judo have a lot of nawaza to it like did it yeah. inform your jujitsu at all yeah for sure um but i still sucked when i started <laughs> I was still terrible um i like the school where i trained judo at was was good but no, I was not training with any Jimmy Pedro, if that makes sense. Mm. Mm. Um, it's funny, that it reminds me of uh, just a random story. I'm going to interject you with my ADD. Um, one time I was down in California. I just finished a tournament down there, and I uh, was taking a bus from my hotel back to LAX. And the, I was like the only person on the bus. It was like 2 in the morning. And uh, the bus driver was this kindly old, well, I shouldn't say kindly, he was old. He was an old Asian fellow who um, I noticed when I was paying for my fare had cauliflowered ears. So I sat close to the front of the bus. I was the only one there. And I was like, so, you, uh, and I'm trying to think of something that's a little more common than jujitsu. I'm like, uh, are you a boxer? Were you a boxer at some point? I see you got cauliflowered ears. He's like, oh, no, uh, judo. Uh, do the judo. Like, oh, okay, well, I'm coming from a jiu-jitsu tournament. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. He just started getting grumpy right away after that. Like, oh, jiu-jitsu. What did do is it was it. <laughs> it's like it's not important, right? I, I don't think he wanted to talk to me after that. But That's so uh, funny. I found that funny. Yeah, I, I found myself on the wrong side of his right. prejudices. <laughs> judo guys um i mean i've met so many that are great i've trained with so many that are great but they always seem to have or always seem to have some hang up with jujitsu they're like mm. oh you guys just do this crazy guard pulling shit you know with flying yeah. yeah what are you guys even doing down there on the ground you know like this is funny because it came from judo <laughs> yeah it came from uh Oh, I'm gonna have to rack my brain now. What type of judo it was? Kozen my judo. friend is is a uh, historian of martial arts, and he's gonna kick my ass for not knowing this. Isn't it Kosen um, judo, or is that totally wrong? Kosen, yes, yeah. sorry, Kosen judo. That's uh, the guard puller, the yes. guard pulling judo, and exactly. all of a sudden they start beating judo guys with pulling guard, and everybody got mad. That's probably where it started. So That's thanks a lot, it. guys. Yeah, jeez. Uh, <laughs> but I'm like, guys, they're they're like the same thing just different rules pretty much they're, I mean, they're different aspects of the same thing it's like wrestling too yeah. it's like wrestling doesn't suck they're just really good at wrestling yeah like there's just different rules 
you know but it's the same well, it's, there's different objectives too like you're just hoping to get the guy to the ground and hold him there yeah so i don't know what else do, i don't care how you get to the ground you're looking to submit him when they get there so yeah like i don't know where all the beef or animosity comes from it always not to get like all super or uh, philosophical but it always it. it, it kind of pisses me off when grapplers or martial artists or um well i shouldn't say martial artists uh like grapplers mm-hmm. when grapplers are mad at each other pisses me off because we should be mad at people who are signing up for football or people who are signing up for soccer not mad but you know what i mean like those should be the people we're trying to convince that like jujitsu you shouldn't be trying to convince a judo player necessarily that jujitsu is like the greatest thing in the world you should be trying to convince the people signing up for soccer or baseball mm-hmm. get them you know they're the ones we want who i think need it the most like if there's some wrestler or judo guy who's out there like just and they love judo great it's the same thing he Te- teaches yeah. all the same stuff this- this goes back to the whole uh, philosophical thing that Joe Rogan always talks about with tribes, people and tribes. Yeah. And it, you can go to the macrocosm and you can bring it down to the microcosm. But like you're saying, it can be between a wrestler and a judo guy or a judo guy and a jiu-jitsu guy. But then you get into jiu-jitsu itself and we have our own infighting. It can be between no gi and gi. You see that constantly. It can be within the gi itself. It can be guard pullers and takedown guys. And it can be, you know, modern uh jujitsu versus old school jujitsu you know closed guard versus worm guard everybody has their thing and the problem is that nobody's wrong and nobody's right and it's i think like we need to start calling it grappling period yeah whether you're sambo judo lucha libre bjj collegiate wrestling it's all grappling we're all using the same meat suit that we're given you know with the same anatomical uh, abilities and resistances and who cares how you manipulate that body you know yeah. it's, it's all got validity to it none of it is shit it's all good so stuff. we need to band together and say you know screw strikers <laughs> that's the key <laughs> that's the right? key yeah I'm that's the answer come down to that <laughs> yeah that's the answer right there no um like I, I hate seeing um, when there's like two or three jujitsu schools in the same city and they're trying to like steal each other's students. Like that's that the worst. Breaks my heart you, because you know what's even worse than that is when they say they post things like we are all one and jujitsu family and they post these Tom de Blas memes that are all inspirational when what they're really trying to do is say we are family you aren't yeah we have real jujitsu if you want to train with a good jujitsu instructor you're gonna to come to our school yeah. not these guys you know two blocks away who do the same thing but they don't pay me and the thing is is in, in all those cities where you see people squabbling like i said the situation three or four schools trying to take each other's students like in that same city there's probably hundreds of kids every month signing up for soccer or baseball mm-hmm. or taekwondo or karate no offense to those two they can they can be legit but many times they're not you know like go after go after those people don't go after another jujitsu school you know what's an interesting tact that i've seen um a couple instructors up in edmonton which is the northern of the larger cities in alberta uh use is they have gone into the public school system and for the first time in this province i think in the country uh they've got bjj as an actual academic subject for their for their students that's awesome so yeah so like instead of taking soccer or football like you're saying as an academic subject or like badminton or volleyball like something that literally has no human use after grade 12 exactly they can be learning not only learning bjj but they've got some of these kids that are turning into superstars like by the time they're 15 or 16 years old they're going to the uae and winning gold in abu dhabi uh they they're going down into the big ibjjf ones and winning like kids worlds and stuff and this is all before they're even hitting grade 10 yeah like what was i doing at that point yeah picking my nose like there's there's so much that these kids can be getting and besides if they want to stick with it or not by the time they graduate and they don't have to take that class anymore which i would assume they would want to because it's just addictive as as the nature of the sport but even if they didn't they walk out of there with legitimate self-defense yeah exactly not bump set spike or or not i'm a running back exactly we really hate on sports these sports guys are going to hate this podcast that's okay they're probably not listening 
if, yeah. you're, if you're someone who's like really into soccer and you've never tried jujitsu, I mean, you should give it a try. You've, you've got, you've listened to like 40 minutes of this podcast. You, you owe it to yourself. <laughs> that's like, that's like the length of a whole class. Yeah. You could learn how to strangle a dude by now. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it really makes me upset. Not many things in this world make me like really crazy upset, but well, something, a lot of things do, but in my, per, in my, in my personal life, my personal life, not too many things make me upset, but that makes me upset. Yeah. Just, uh, are we still talking about the politics or just yeah. kids not doing jujitsu? Politics, I'd say, mm. or student, student politics and guard pullers. Yeah. Fuckers. But, uh, <laughs> no, like, uh, <laughs> stealing each other's students is, mm. I mean, obviously if someone like shows up at your academy and, um, they like it better than their academy and they sign up then cool yeah whatever yeah there's a difference cool. between switching schools and and like sniping other students yeah exactly i don't know i'm not a huge oh, fan they're of all crianch anyways they don't matter yeah exactly we put them in the crianch corner they have to wear a special <laughs> stripe on their belt it says yeah, traitor a hat with a c yeah it's, yeah it's like you can stay but you're a traitor just so everyone yeah. knows <laughs> <laughs> nobody trusts him you're gonna be the the submission dummy for every technique yeah and no you can tap but i'm gonna hold it a little longer you you earned it you understand exactly but uh so tell me tell me about your jujitsu like what what type of jujitsu do does paul like to use oh my gosh i like to just fly through the air with a spinning back fist and then i then i switch oh, it I up i understand and... why ibjjf isn't working out <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> No, um, I don't know. I like, uh, I have such a, I have a weird style because I've been to so many different schools, you know? So okay, like, so I, you're in a tournament, slap bump, what's your first move? Um, tap, you know, really quickly. It's quick. Get out Damn, of there. <laughs> those gold medals are going to be hard. Yeah, I know. No, um, I am <laughs> in a tournament. I try to get the takedown, you know, try to, try to get on top. Who knows what happens? Um, so then, a purple belt, that's not going to work. Yeah, I know. I got <laughs> so, that, so then I switch it up for a flying scissor, and then I transition a truck, and you know, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, no, I like the mount. I like the mount and the back. Um, so okay. I try to always get to, to those positions. And, that's that Helson. Yeah, exactly. Mount in the back. Exactly. You know, but I think it works well because um, I try to combine it with like a more modern style. You know what I mean? But, okay. Um, but I honestly, you like, like to face crank people. Yeah, face crank them, and then I go for the uh, MNRI roll. But um, savage. <laughs> what about you? What do you like to do? Um, I I up to blue belt. I was a pretty traditional as far as take down, pass, mount back. You know, um, I had a pretty good guard because I'm a lanky mother. Um, I'd be hitting triangles and arm bars if I was in my guard, but I'd try to wrestle them down first. At purple belt, like I was alluding to, that doesn't really work. <laughs> you try no. to wrestle a guy at purple belt, and they're underneath you so fast. Yeah, they just like if you even start to drop levels, they pull guard yeah, immediately. I know. Like they they're assuming you're pulling guard. They're trying to double pull. Yeah. And so, um, I got murdered by this one guy in my local scene who at purple belt just turned into a super guard puller. And he just slay me. Like, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get my takedown points. I couldn't pass his guard. He'd just triangle me every time. And so, out of frustration, I sort of started to change my style into a guard-pulling style. So, for the majority of my purple belt, I was working De La Hiva. I was, you know, trying all the new stuff, the worm yeah. guards, the De La Spider, you know, this goofy <laughs> nonsense that is, oh, it's working at the cutting edge of black belt, but, you know, down at purple belt, it doesn't still... I'm not that good at it, yeah. so I'd get crushed anyways. But um, And then coming into my brown belt, I started to remember that you could take a guy down and pass the guard. So I've now – I will still pull guard. Like I, I do just out of habit if, I, if you know the guy gives it to me. But I like to try and set up some grips first, if not to take the guy down, if to pass his guard afterwards. And then, I mean – our school specifically is kind of known our competitors all we're a pretty small school but our competitors are known as like submission hunters like we don't 
play the points game very well. <laughs> Whether we, it's because we're not trying to. We're trying to submit from everywhere, so that's kind of our deal. Yeah, my my too. Mine school. Mine. I can't talk, man. My school too. Mine mm-hmm. school too. Um, <laughs> I like to do this at niche. I, <laughs> yeah, us too. In fact, we have guys. Um, one guy going to the ADCC trials next month in Poland. And nice. we're trying to teach him, like, hey, man, you got to look for points, you know? Yeah, that's what screwed Gordon Ryan in his low match, hey? Yeah. He, he did like us idiots. He tried to submit the guy. <laughs> fucking, fucking moron. I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah, it's the worst thing you can do in a jiu-jitsu competition. Yeah, you got to get those points. Mm. I'm going to switch up my style, actually, and just go for advantages. Go uh, advantage, nice. advantage only. Like, even if it's looking like I'm going to score, I'm just going to back off a little bit. <laughs> so you, you catch a sweet sweep and then sit back to your butt so you only get the advantage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm ahead. <laughs> That'd be, I feel like that would be... The case could be made that that would be like the most skilled jujitsu guy of all time if he just wins on advantages every single tournament. You know, like he doesn't allow the other guy to score on him once, and he gets like ten advantages. I know, wouldn't that be crazy? But that guy would have to be really good, wouldn't he? If he had like try to do that, now you're gonna ruin one of my matches. (laughs) If he had like ten advantages to zero, (laughs) sit down in half guard, but don't try to pass. Because think about it, like basically you would have to be so good. That you're just like toying with this person, you know they yeah, can't they can't score on you no matter how hard they try, <laughs> <laughs> but you're just racking up advantages. <laughs> what a strategy! Okay, I'm convinced advantages are the highest goal. <laughs> Changed my whole mindset right now. Hey man, <laughs> sub only sucks. Screw that stuff. Yeah, we're gonna change the form change the format of your tournament. Just make it advantage only. <laughs> Advantages only. Yeah, whoever has the more advantage points, like we're gonna give you points, but they don't matter. Points are the new advantages. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you're tied we'll on come a come down to points if the advantages are tied. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Drew, this has been great, but I've got to wrap this up, man. Is there anything that you want to promote or talk about before before we head out? Um. Well, I've got a super fight coming up on May 6th that is part of the Submission Series Productions out here in Canada. They're kind of the uh, headline uh, pro BJJ circuit that's going on. So they're coming out to Alberta for the first time. I got to uh, got to go tap a dude out um, who is really good at tapping dudes out, so it'll be interesting. And what's really cool is Tom DeBlass is coming up for that one to commentate, and he's doing a seminar the next day, oh, so that's, that's going to be awesome. a fun weekend. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I uh, I told him to make me sound good, but I have a feeling that he's going to try to get some comeuppance for me making fun of him so much. <laughs> good luck to you, man. That's awesome. That's coming up, too. That's like... Yeah, yeah, a few weeks. That's awesome. Well, congrats on Because Jitsu. You're doing, doing really good, I think. Yeah, my pleasure, man. And thanks for coming on the show. Thanks a lot to Drew for coming on the show. Once again, make sure you go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media platforms, and support Drew's work. Look up Because Jitsu. I think if you've never seen it before, you're going to find it hilarious, assuming you do jiu-jitsu. If you're like, man, I've never even heard of jiu-jitsu, then you might might be over your head a little bit. But man, you just listen to a podcast for like an hour and you don't do jiu-jitsu? Man, like, you should try it out. It's a lot of fun. For those of you who have been following us for a little while, you might remember that a little while ago we hosted the Matrix Jiu-Jitsu Invitational Tournament in Kaiserslautern, Germany. On the 21st of May, we're going to be putting on the second event, and we're currently still looking for sponsors and fighters. So if you or anyone you know owns a apparel company, a sticker company, a Bitcoin company, maybe you like sell drugs and you want us to advertise for that, uh, whatever you whatever you do related to, to jiu-jitsu and you want to uh, advertise on our space, contact us and we will get that set up. Also, if you know someone who is under 80 kilograms and wants to fight in this tournament in Germany on May 21st, also hit us up. The last tournament offered a 400 euro grand prize and we are trying to offer much more than that. Keep your eyes out on our page. We'll be announcing all the details very soon, as soon as we have them confirmed. Also, go to matrix.com and look up the the show notes for this episode everything that we talked about in this episode um, that was of any interest is going to be there's going to be a link on matrix.com to that to that resource 
So if you were listening and halfway through you were like, man, I wish I was taking notes. Well, I was taking notes, so I got those notes for you. Also, while you're there on Matrix.com, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get regularly uh, scheduled and delivered content uh, talking about what's going on here at Matrix and maybe some words of wisdom or inspiration for your day. And of course, please visit iTunes and Stitcher and give us a five-star rating and a review. We're, we're starved for attention and um, for someone to say that we're doing a good job, you know, I'm very self-conscious. Man, this is just eating me up sometimes. So if you could, please just go to iTunes and say like, man, you're doing okay. You know, like maybe not five stars, but like at least four. I mean, geez. So if that's something you're into, like giving praise and support, uh, please, iTunes, Stitcher, five-star rating, review, you know, even a four-star rating, like whatever whatever you can manage to scrounge up around the house. Maybe you gave your last star to Joe Rogan or something like that. So I understand. Fucking star budget might be spent for the month. As always, thanks to Vinny Russo and Waves Overhead for producing all the music that you hear on this podcast. Vinny produces all of the beats and Waves Overhead does the awesome pop punk song that you hear at the beginning and the end of the show. If you want to download their music and give them some support, go to Matrix.com and you'll find links to both of those artists. The song To Make Amends is the theme song for the Matrix podcast and you heard a little bit at the beginning but I'm going to play the rest right now.